Patrice, first, honored to have you here. Listen, I, you know, I got to see Patrice in action. Uh, I played a small role. Patrice and Precious Matubi played the, the major role when we brought the Global Citizen Festival to Johannesburg. And so I was there. Um, and Jay-Z and, and Beyonce and Chris Martin and Pharrell and then all the great stars from Africa, Burna Boy and, you know, all the others. And right before Jay-Z and Beyonce came on together, Patrice and Precious came on, and the ovation for Patrice and Precious was larger and louder than for Jay-Z and Beyonce, no, 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 so no. it's true. <laughs> no, it's true. It was like, you know, so these guys are superstars. Uh, I was, I listen, I was very interested just now, uh, you know, I want to talk about your whole career arc, uh, and we'll go from there, but I was so interested, you know, again, Forbes, we rank the billionaires of the world, and, and you were the first black billionaire from Africa on our, on our Forbes list ever, and I was so interested that when I just mentioned that offhand when you came up before, the people applauded, and we're so proud of that, because in America, if you're a billionaire, they're like throwing things at you, and like, <laughs> and here there's so much pride in your success, uh, which I think is very interesting, so, and again, that's why it's amazing you're here, such a great role model. Maybe, yet yeah, again, you weren't, you know, you weren't born a billionaire, you built it, maybe give this audience who's not familiar kind of your, 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 kind of your career arc from when you were this age to now? Well, I, uh, uh, I had a huge advantage because I came from an entrepreneurial family. And, uh, you know, I, I saw some of the most successful entrepreneurs in the, in, in the black community at that time were in a 50 kilometer radius. So my grandfather was an entrepreneur, my father was an entrepreneur. But it's interesting. I had a quick discussion with the president, uh, and, and let me thank you for bringing Forbes to Africa and, and believing in Africa and inspiring Africa. Can we clap hands for <laughs> Randall? So on, uh, uh, tomorrow we'll be in Mozambique, and we'll be going to the north to play football with the re some, of, some of the refugees there, because there's a $30 billion investment there, uh, B with the standing for billion. And, uh, and then uh, on Wednesday, of course, we are coming to your wonderful event uh, at Kasani. Kasani, and then Wednesday night we are off to LA. Now why I'm saying that is because I was listening to some of the previous speakers here, and uh, Friday, uh, Warren Buffett, in fact on Saturday is the, the Berkshire Hathaway, and then we'll be at the Milken on Sunday. But the interesting thing is, uh, I mean the young women you had here, reflects some of the smartest and the brightest in Africa. And the young lady who was sitting there, there was a time when she was talking and uh, she thought that there was no sound. And you see creativity. She said, she implied, she said that she was going to speak. So uh, there's a problem, there's a problem with the mic, but she's got a solution immediately. And she will talk, and, and uh, so that you can. So let's talk louder. That'll be the solution. Right? But but what that indicates is the exceptional exceptional talent. Uh, but what we have have to accept and recognize is many of the businesses that are going to be started by the young people who are with us here will not succeed. Uh, this is uh, a, a very small amount of businesses worldwide. Entrepreneur, entrepreneurial ventures, start, startups, very small percentage succeeds. But where America leads the world, and it's a culture we should bring into Africa, which is different from Germany and Europe, is that in America, if you do not succeed, it's not the end of the world. Sometimes then, it's almost, I don't want to say they encourage you to, to fail, but they encourage you to keep trying. In Germany and in parts of Europe, the world comes to an end. And, and they almost tell you, you know, we knew that you were not going to succeed from the very beginning, so let go of it. Yep. So the key issue for us is, uh, is to, uh, to encourage many of our young people to, to keep at it. Right. Uh, the problem that we have also is, we also have to be realistic. I mean, I've heard people 20, 30 years ago say, it's Africa's time, it's Africa's time. Uh, I mean, there's some exceptional things that have happened, but in relation to what can still happen, uh, there are huge opportunities, but the, uh, two quick issues. Uh, in America, you've got infrastructure, you've got support for entrepreneurship, you've got 
facilities, you've got role models, you've got entrepreneurs themselves who are consistently looking for encouraging new ventures. There are challenges in Africa, and we have to deal with those challenges. One of the ladies was talking about, if I want to travel from uh, Nigeria to some other parts in West Africa, in East Africa, I've got to go to Europe first before I go down. I was at a meeting a few years ago with the minister, you know, we were leading a trade delegation to the, to the Democratic Republic of Congo. The minister of finance said, my children are studying in South Africa at UCT to send money to them, to wire money. I've got to wire the money to Europe and from Europe to Africa. So we've got to invest in infrastructure, invest in resources, invest in making more financing available, but more importantly, encouraging as many young people as possible to, to, to start the startup. Start the startup. Let me use another word. Begin the new venture. Let's make things happen. Because sometimes we've got these brilliant ideas. We talk about uh, some of the things we intend doing, which is wonderful. But the urgency now is to make things happen. Get going. Invest. Uh, there is more resources available to support young entrepreneurs than we sometimes recognize ourselves. And I think I, I can't uh, tell you how important what you just said is that the, there's no such thing as failure if you learn. So even if you start a business and fail, you didn't fail because then you learned in your next business. And I think that's, and you know, that's something, you know, Patricia, you lead in, in that, you know, setting that example that, that failure is good because failure means you tried. Absolutely. The worst thing you could do is not try. That's a failure. Yeah. If you try, you're a success. Absolutely. And you, if, as long as you yeah. learn. I mean, I, you know, when I was young, when I was 27, I raised, I had my first startup, I did, and I raised $18 million. How old I, were you? I was 27. Amazing. 26, 27. I raised $18 million. I lost all of it. <laughs> and, but that, that is the thing that is good about America. Absolutely. The second startup I raised another $18 million because they're like, good, you won't make those mistakes this time. <laughs> You'll make new mistakes, yeah. but you won't make the old mistakes, so as long as you learn. On that issue, I mean, the companies that we are associated with will be spending $5 billion over the next five years. And that $5 billion, I mean, we can invest in, you know, we've got businesses in Asia, in India, in China, we've got investments in America and Europe, but the $5 billion is earmarked for Africa mm. because we believe in this continent the best opportunities for us. And you know, it's something that's cynical. Some of the problems that have existed in Africa over the years that have served as a disincentive because the risk profile can be, can be very high. Sure. But you've got to be able to work your way around that and, and create value because at the end of the day, our shareholders are worldwide and we are judged almost exclusively. Of course, sustainability and climate change is crucial by the value that we create. I mean, you know, they buy our shares at a certain price and they want, uh, they want to see that, that value increase. Well, the, you know, more risk, but hopefully more return because there's so You're much right. opportunity. Yeah. So what are you looking for? So you have, you know, $5 billion to deploy. So when you're looking at, you know, and again, you're a lot of things you're doing a little later stage, not early, early, early startups, but when you're looking for ideas here in Africa, what are you looking for? Well, let me tell you. A huge chunk of that is, is in, uh, we've got some money that's specifically looking for uh, innovative, but recognize that technology is gonna play a key role. Uh, you, you, you also have to look at Africa in the context of what are Africa's competitive advantages. Uh, we shouldn't compete with the rest of the world at this stage in areas where they are 10, 20, 30, 40 years ahead of us. Tourism in Africa is world class. Agriculture, exceptional opportunities. FinTech in Africa, exceptional opportunity. Education technology, exceptional opportunities. Uh, agriculture, and, and what some of our young people should do, and many of them are doing that already, Look at uh, those industries because this is where a huge chunk of the money, there is money 
that is looking for investment. Uh, where we are failing is to maintain the, the contact. It would, you know, what we are doing in South Africa now, and, and it's something we want to do uh, world, uh, throughout the continent, is to have centers where there's continuous engagement with young people who've got new ideas. We started this partnership with Mike Milken. You know, we've put a, the, the Milken Motsepe $10 million uh, prize uh, money that we've put available. It's focused on Africa. And basically, the, the young Africans who've got the most exciting ideas, uh, entrepreneurial, because it's focused on entrepreneurship, in terms of uh, how can you create opportunities in e-commerce? How can you create opportunities in agriculture? How can you create opportunities in education? Yep. And we're looking for the smartest, best ideas in the world, and we've, re we've received more than 1,000 from Africa, and, and uh, the, the money is available. There is money that's available for VCs or venture capital opportunities. In fact, for any opportunity, the only proviso is it's got to be profitable. And the opposite is true as well. There's no money available for good ideas that are not sustainable and that are not profitable. That's right. That's right. And the, I mean, the, I've, I've got many young people who, you know, my phone number is all over, and they come and say that I've got this incredible idea. You know, this, I've got this app, amazing app. And, uh, you know, uh, some of our young people are, I mean, are very eloquent. And, and uh, we engage with them and say, uh, you know, we've got many people who look at these opportunities. A significant amount of those ideas, new opportunities, are not profitable. But you shouldn't be discouraged because this time you came up with an opportunity or with a, a venture you want to pursue that is not profitable. Try something else. Uh, let, let's start all over again. I mean, I've had so many failures. And uh, thank God I saw my father having challenges in his business and overcome them. So I was never discouraged by you know, not succeeding. And, and I know that we, you know, I spoke about the five billion. Some of that will not succeed. But thank God. Most, most of it probably won't succeed. But, but the majority of it will succeed more than the part that doesn't, right? I, ho I hope a huge chunk of it succeeds. Yes. You know? Because uh, my shareholders, but I can guarantee you some of it will not. And we've just started a new bank, which is one of the fastest growing digital banks in the world, Time Bank. Uh, it's got f more than 4 million uh, uh, bank holders and participants, and, and it's exciting because it's doing exceptionally well. We've started one of the most, uh, we invested in uh, uh, 5G, in a partnership with uh, Rain in, in, in South Africa, it's doing exceptionally well. Yep. But there's a whole lot of other opportunities. Uh, we have diversified, so I mean, we encourage, the best ideas are in this room. The best ideas are not sitting in some corporate office. Uh, and I can tell you, if we keep track with all of the people who are here, five, seven, ten years from now, yep. they're going to surpass and exceed even their wildest expectations in terms of their success. I'm going to take a picture of this room right now while we're talking, while you're talking, because I guarantee you, like you said, five years, seven years, ten years, there is a president of CC in this room. There's a future head of state somewhere in this room. And there is a future Patrice Mazzeppi in this room. There's a billionaire in this room. We don't know who it is. Who is, who is out there? Who is it? <laughs> I, 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 I must tell you, I was amazed. I was in Nigeria, uh, you know, on the football because uh, I, I, you know, we own a football team because of the love of, for, for football. But more than that, it was one of the philanthropic ways of giving back uh, from, you know, as a family. And I met a young Nigerian when uh, we had a meeting with President Buhari. And he said to me, take my number because... Uh, I'm going to be the next billionaire. Mm -hmm. And before he left, I said, please remember, I might need a job from you. Right. So <laughs> keep me in mind. But the talent is, I mean, I, I meet, we go to the World Economic Forum every year. And we meet, and we go to Silicon Valley all the time. 
And, 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 and of course, we've got special ties in India because we've got investments there. And you see some of the smartest, brightest, most talented entrepreneurs in the world. And, uh, and when I come back to Africa and I meet you know, young people like, like today, uh, you know, I, I can compare them with what I've seen in relation to the best in the world. And it gives me so much confidence that some of our young people are as good as the best in the world. I agree. I'll, what, I'll, what, they need, what they need is support. What they need is finance. What they need is encouragement. What they need is reconfirmation of the confidence we have in them. That's, that's critically important. I think many or most are even, maybe even better, because it's harder here. It's hard, you know, it's, it's less developed, so it's hard, so to get to that first level is harder. And that, listen, sometimes being harder is good for you because it makes you better, right? Randall, you've said something so important. The most difficult part in any new venture business is when you start. And, and because when you start, when you succeed, Success, success perpetuates itself. It breeds greater success. The most difficult, I mean, I remember when I started, Mandela used to laugh one day because, uh, you know, there were meetings where one of the, the, the CEO of one of the largest banks in, in Africa said to Mandela that Patrice came to us many years ago. He had the lousiest business proposal because I wanted to buy mines which were unprofitable, which were old, which were closed, and which were marginal. And he said, everybody that, he, that in the bank said, this is the biggest crap in the world, he will not succeed. But this guy uh, said that he supported me because he knew that if I wasn't gonna pay the workers, the thousand workers who were going to be employed on our mines, I would be in trouble. So he's, you know, he supported us because this is what usually happens. Uh, if you look at the most successful entrepreneurs in the world, the common feature amongst the majority of them is that when they started, everybody said to them, most people said to them, this thing won't succeed. You know, you are trying what doesn't stand a chance, uh, I don't want to say in hell, but what doesn't stand a chance of, of taking off. And, uh, at some stage, they got support, and this is how uh, the success, some of the most successful businesses in the world were. You know John Doerr? John Doerr was saying that Elon Musk came to him. John Doerr, Silicon Valley, yeah. legendary venture capitalist. You know, yeah. we, are, we are part of this breakthrough energy yes. ventures with Bill Gates. So in one of these meetings, it's not one of the closed sessions, so I can say that. He said that uh, Elon Musk came to him when Elon Musk started. Now, Elon Musk is now the most, the wealthiest entrepreneur in the world. So Elon Musk came African. And, well, South African. Yeah. Yeah. African. So Elon Musk came and, and, uh, and pitched to, to seek an investment. And uh, I shouldn't have mentioned John Dewar's name, but anyway, you will keep it just amongst us. <laughs> but the issue was, Elon was, was very unimpressive. And for unimpressive, it means very arrogant. Yes. And very cocky and... Uh, wasn't impressed. And then came a German guy, professor, smart, educated, persuasive, and he thought, I must go with this guy. What happened? Uh, Elon Musk <laughs> succeeded. I'm not saying you guys must be cocky and arrogant. Uh, Confident. Uh, keep away, that's not good. But yeah. uh, I think he believed so much sure. in, in what he was doing, and, he, and he's done very well. And he succeeded. Confident. Uh, you mentioned... Uh, when you, you know, launched uh, in mining, we're spending, on, we're spending Wednesday focused on sustainability, uh, including it. We have, we have your wife, Precious Montsepi, we're doing an entire, she runs African Fashion Initiative. She's even smarter than you. You married up, sir. But, um, well, well, but well, <laughs> and you're smart. But, uh, but I, I want to say to you, my claim to fame is that I'm married to Precious. <laughs> And some, sometimes people say, Patrice, which Patrice? The Patrice that's married to Precious. So, so, anyway, so we're going to focus on sustainable fashion up in Kasani, but what have you learned about sustainability? I mean, you're in, you're in an industry that's notoriously unsustainable. Well, you know, it's interesting because, I mean, we've invested uh, 
a huge amount of, uh, we've invested with Bill Gates, about 20 of us with uh, Warren Buffett is part in uh, uh, Alibaba mm -hmm. is part, yep. Amazon is part. But that investment is focused on producing energy with zero CO2 emissions. And it's based on using some of the best technology in the world. And, uh, and there are opportunities. I mean, we've got a renewable company uh, that's focused on uh, uh, renewables, but pr pr producing uh, energy through sun and through wind. And uh, uh, the whole commitment to sustainability and to climate change is critically, critically, critically important. So we've got to continue to run world-class businesses, but do so in the mining industry. I mean, the mining industry, I mean, you will hear in Davos in a few weeks' time that, you know, we are part of what's called the ICMM, which is the 30 largest mining companies in the world. And uh, there's a huge commitment, and there are plans in place, assessment, independent evaluations to make sure that uh, we, we uh, uh, do our businesses in compliance with climate obligations and, and this critical element of sustainability. But there's an opportunity for Africa in the whole new uh, business ventures that will arise because of the world's focus on sustainability. Well, again, and it's, a, it's a huge advantage for Africa, again, because, you know, a lot of other parts of the world, everything's already developed and it's too hard for them right. to, to change. Yeah. We're here, so many new opportunities, so you could go straight to the yeah. good stuff. You know, two more questions. One, you know, the importance of, and again, since we're going to have so many future successes in this room, you are, you know, you are a leader in terms of the idea of responsible capitalism, the idea, you know, with what you're doing, sustainability, um, uh, and, you know, and your climate partnership with, you know, Patrice was the first African to take the giving pledge, which is a commitment among billionaires who pledge to give at least half of their money away back to the, back to the world while they're living or as soon as they pass. So what, you know, what have you learned over the years in terms of that responsibility from success? Well, you know, you cannot have an economy or a country where the rich people are only about themselves. It's not sustainable. It's not, uh, it's, not, it's not even in their interest. Definitely, it's not in the interest of their children. So when you create opportunities that allow uh, the poor, the unemployed, the marginalized to grow, to succeed, to develop, to become sustainable. Uh, one of the young ladies here was talking about aid and donations. And I mean, there's a place for aid and there's a place for donations, but no country in the world has built a world-class economy based on aid or based on donations. You've got to focus on trade, you've got to focus on partnerships, you've got to focus on entrepreneurship, and that's why this whole African continental free trade area is one of the most exciting. I just want to tell you a quick story. We, we have a mine in Zambia. We spend about seven, eight hundred million dollars building a copper mine in Zambia. So they took me in a helicopter before we started the mine. And I was flying in that helicopter from Zambia, uh, at the border between Zambia and, and uh, the Democratic Republic of Congo. I mean, I saw five, seven, eight kilometers of trucks on both ways, waiting Stuck. to cross the border. I mean, it's incredible. Yeah. I mean, if, I were, if I'm in Europe, and I'm in Germany, or I'm in France, or I'm in Italy, I can travel freely, unimpeded. Right. So this, I mean, can you imagine if there was, if that Although until border 20 was, years ago, that didn't exist. So that that can happen. Okay. So I think, you know, uh, if we proceed with the African continental free trade, it will not just create a trillion dollars of new trade, but it will create opportunities for, for, you know, businesses that many of the young people in this room want to start, can start. And uh, I mean, the future for Africa is, is exciting, and the future is in this room. Okay, last question. Let's talk about some football. <laughs> Uh, I, I thought you were going to talk about music, you know. And <laughs> you're the, uh, yeah. you're the, new, the president, newish, of the Confederation of African Football, and you were elected. So you're the, you know, you're the future of African football here, leading the future. You had a 10-point plan that got you elected. How, how are you going to bring, and I believe your platform was to make African football the best football in the world, well, right? Well, well, let me tell you why I went. Oh, we, we own a football team, and they were the champions of Africa 
in 2016, and, and we went into football, not just because we love football, but it's also a means to give back. But the reason why, the main reason why I uh, agreed to uh, become president of, of African football is, is the 300 million young people in Africa between the ages of 15 and 25. There are 300 million young people on the African continent between the ages of 15 and 25. We have to connect with them. And, uh, and connect with them means we've got to be where they are. Uh, and we've got to hear what they say because they're some of the most exciting and most brilliant ideas. And, and football by far is the most popular sport. I mean, you spoke about uh, global citizens. I mean, you know, Precious and I, you know, after we brought Beyonce and Jay-Z and Pharrell and all of the others, Burner Boy, a lot of the young people said, you know, we knew Precious was cool, but we never knew that Patrice can also try to be cool. You know? <laughs> and, uh, and that was an indication that, you know, we have to be more engaged. And football is, is, is a key. We use football to connect with young people, to hear what their views are, to hear how they see the future, and also uh, to, to, to use football to say, don't do crime, don't encourage corruption, uh, don't use drugs. Use football to say, pursue your dreams. I mean, one of the ladies who was here spoke about the sky is the limit. Now, the sky is the limit is a, logo, is a slogan of the football team that's owned by the family. Indeed, through football, and of course, through other uh, means, but football for us is an important tool for African football to become amongst the best in the world, but it's also the dignity, the pride. When you see Mo Salah, when you see Sadio Mane, some of the best football players in Africa, that every African country has got exceptional football players. But those football players, it's not just about football, in isolation from socio-economic development and growth, economic investment, a better life, more dreams. So that's why we went into football, and I think it's the president of football is here in Botswana, and the president of football from Angola is also here, and tomorrow we'll be with the presidents of football on the sub-Saharan continent. So football is, is critically important, and uh, as I said, we love it, but it's got a broader objective as well, and a broader purpose. Well, again, what I, I love about you, Patrice, is everything you do, you know, some people are like, oh, football, that's fun. But everything you do, I've been, you know, watching you for years, is tied to something bigger, Absolutely. a bigger idea, Absolutely. a bigger idea to move things forward. And, you know, so on behalf of everybody here, thank you for everything you do to move the continent here forward. You're everywhere. It's true. Every time, I, you know, we speak, you're somewhere else. It's almost always, you know, it's usually in Africa, but you're, you know, what you do for, this, uh, you know, for Africa is, is exceptional. And we appreciate you spending your time and coming here with us this week. So, and thank you. For, thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you.